fellow scientists. My name is Maya, and today we're going to talk about Earth's neighbor, Mars. Make sure you have your paper and pencil ready so you can take notes as we go. Ready? Let's start with the basics and see how it compares to Earth. Mars is the second smallest planet and is about half the size of Earth. You may have heard it called the red planet. That's because most of what you see on the surface is an iron compound that gives Mars its red color. Unlike Earth, Mars has a very thin atmosphere. Because of this, the temperature can change a lot depending on where you are and what time of year it is. It can get as cold as negative 221 degrees Fahrenheit in winter and as hot as 95 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. That's a range of over 300 degrees. Not only that, but the average temperature on Mars is negative 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that with 61 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the average temperature on Earth. Since Mars has such a thin atmosphere, there is also little protection from the sun's radiation. Radiation is energy transmitted by waves. The warmth you feel from the sun, that's radiation. When your food heats up in the microwave, that's radiation too. As you might know from going outside on a sunny day without sunscreen, too much of it can be a very bad thing. On Earth, we are protected by our atmosphere. But on Mars, there's little protection. On average, people on Earth are exposed to a safe dose of 0.6 rads of radiation per year. The Mars rover Curiosity was exposed to eight rads per year during its time on Mars. That's almost 14 times what it is on Earth. Lastly, let's talk about gravity. The gravity on Mars is about one third of what it is on Earth. Take your weight, divide it by three. That's how much you would weigh on Mars. So let's say you weigh 90 pounds on Earth. On Mars, you would weigh only 30 pounds. Jump. You would jump three times as high on Mars. Time to pause and make sure you've taken notes on the basic characteristics of Mars. Press play again once you're done taking notes. As we just learned, the atmosphere on Mars is much thinner than on Earth. It's made up of 96% carbon dioxide and around 2% of both argon and nitrogen. Can you think of a big reason it would be tough for humans to live on Mars? Yep, oxygen. Only 0.16% of the Mars atmosphere is made up of oxygen. Compare that to Earth's atmosphere, which is made up of 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Humans would need to either bring or make their own in order to breathe there. However, there is a lot of carbon dioxide, which is needed for growing plants. Let's go down to the surface now. Did you know that Mars has the largest mountain in the solar system? Olympus Mons is 16 miles high, making it about three times higher than Mount Everest, the highest mountain on Earth. Going even closer, you might be able to tell from pictures that the surface of Mars is rocky and sandy. Let's investigate the sand on Mars. We know that it's red, but what else do we know about it? Well, scientists have found what are called perchlorates in the sand. Perchlorates are compounds that have chlorine and oxygen bonded together. Finding these perchlorates can be a good and a bad thing. Unfortunately, perchlorates are toxic to humans, so any astronaut would need to have sufficient protective wear so that they do not come into contact with it. The dust being so small and fine makes this a little trickier, since it can easily get in things. Think of how when you come back from the beach, sand is everywhere, but engineers are working hard to solve this problem. Perchlorates have one key benefit though. They contain oxygen, which can be hard to come by on Mars. Not only is oxygen useful for breathing, but it can also be used to make rocket fuel for a return trip to Earth. Another important thing about the surface and atmosphere of Mars is the dust storms. You may have heard of these large dust storms. They are caused by differences in temperatures. The sun heats the ground, the hot air then rises up in the colder air, which creates wind, carrying dust. Because it's warmer in the summer, storms happen more often then. They can last for weeks at a time, and Mars typically has one continent-sized storm per year. 
with these storms, the winds max out at about 60 miles per hour. However, with the thin atmosphere on Mars, the wind only feels like a light breeze. Contrary to popular belief, the dust storms are mostly just disruptive to electrical equipment rather than dangerous for humans. Let's pause again and take some notes on the important information on the terrain and atmosphere on Mars. Press play again when you're finished. We've learned about the basic characteristics, the atmosphere, and the surface of Mars. So now it's time to decide, could humans actually live here? Let's look at the facts. The temperature is a lot colder on Mars, with some places significantly colder than anywhere on Earth. There's minimal oxygen in the atmosphere, but a lot of carbon dioxide that can be used to help with plant growth. The higher exposure to radiation is a challenge and something to plan for, but it's not a deal breaker. The same goes for the lower gravity. Studies are currently being done on the International Space Station to combat the effects of long-term exposure to radiation and lower gravity. Of course, if humans are going to go to Mars, they will need to be gone for at least a few years to make the trip worth it. So they'll need to have supplies and resources to live off of, both for the journey and for once they're there. It can be incredibly expensive and heavy to ship supplies, so the crew will want to be able to use as many resources already on Mars as possible. This is called in situ resource utilization. This includes using the sun for energy, using the carbon dioxide to create water through the Sabater reaction, mining the perchlorates for oxygen, and using minerals in the soil to grow food. However, they will need to bring supplies to build a Mars habitat, which needs to include sleeping quarters, exercise equipment, entertainment, and shielding from the radiation. So, what do you think? Could you live on Mars? <laughs>